thanks to uh, Chris and um, Deirdre for, for hosting, for the sponsors, um, for the, 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 the guests that have spoken beforehand, a lot of local collaborators. Um, yes, while Brisbane may have, um, um, uh, let's say, been awarded the, the 2032 Olympic bid, it's not just Brisbane, it's southeast Queensland. It, in fact, it's, it's much more broad than that. Um, there's a few slides and a few conversations that have happened that I've kind of got a few little thoughts about. Um, I did these slides uh, without consultation with some of the neighbouring um, councils, um, although we do talk quite regularly. And so I'll, I'll sort of breeze through and sort of adjust what I was going to talk a little bit about. Um, we, we talked early on, um, what is the Internet of Things? Um, ultimately, it's things. We've, you've seen this before many times. What, what I'd like to highlight with this is, is it can be pictured really, really simply. Um, the reality is it isn't actually all that simple, and that's kind of part of the problem with this. It's actually a collection of different parts that actually make this all happen. We've talked about the devices, we've talked about the connectivity, we've talked about the aggregation, but then we take it into database and systems. Now, at each of those layers, there are multiple options. Multiple options of sensors, multiple options of networks, multiple options of aggregators. That creates complexity um, and, and does create a lot of challenge um, for, uh, I guess, us in the technology space of things, um, particularly when uh, a, a vendor may go and talk to a business area and say, hey, look what we can do. It's really quick, it's really cheap, it's really easy. Um, it could be, um, but th therein lies some other problems. So to talk about a bit of a, a I guess one of the inspirations for us came out of, uh, from. I'll say us, uh, the IT part of, of Brisbane City Council. Um, we were having some discussions around some business needs. So this is a, a broad concept um, around water quality. And we had a, a, a quite an innovative leader in our city projects office that looked after water quality management. Um, the green dots, uh, manual uh, inspection sites where they go out and take a water sample and test, send it off to a lab. Uh, the orange sites, uh, recreational water health locations that are actually surveyed more frequently, and that's sites where people swim. Um, uh, they, they are sites where there is recreational activity in water. Um, and so we care about the health for the residents, for the communities. Um, the red dots were actually where we started to say, well, actually, we should be speeding this up. The time from taking a water sample, sending it off to a lab, testing it, getting the results, and finding out that the water isn't actually all that safe to swim takes a week that's probably not the best outcome for the community. So let's see if we can speed this up. Now, this is where some of the complexities start to come in. Do we have sensors that can test for Etrocoli bacteria? No, not yet, but that's something to work on. Um, the other general concept here around the yeast case, which um, uh, James talked a little bit about before, um, and, and Catherine's talked about it, um, Michael's talked about it as well and Steph. It, it's a common sort of topic, but ultimately you'll have the sensor that might be used for an operational need. Turn on a sign at that swimming hole to say it's not safe to swim. That's an operational outcome. Um, back to what James was talking about, predictive, is you might be using a, an algorithm to determine whether it's safe or not safe. You might be taking other inputs into that. Um, that's where you want to feed that data into, let's say, a more strategic analysis piece which is actually, actually where you're saying, can I better predict when that water might be unsafe to swim in? And you enhance the algorithm that then gets uploaded back into that operational solution. So that's the sort of scenario we're sort of trying to, trying to work with, trying to uh, explain and, and enable. Um, Michael talked a lot about the concept of this slide, so I'll keep this one really, really quite short. Um, but ultimately, we, yes, we have a, a, an IoT network, a TTN network that we use. Um, it was initially a, uh, get this the right way around, it was initially a network trial where we installed five um, gateways to trial the TTN, the LoRaWAN network. Um, we started off with five sensors two years ago, uh, sorry, five gateways two years ago, and we discovered internally within council there was another area also doing this. So our field services guys in the operational technology side of things were also exploring gateways. So we merged the gateways and we started to collaborate together. We now have 11 gateways. So it's, it's kind of 12 because the Brisbane gateway is actually on two, two frequencies. The others are all on one frequency. Just to talk about frequency, that adds uh, or explains a little bit of that complexity. Can you connect to it? Well, are your devices sending through the right frequency? Or did you know about that? So a whole bunch of these complexities. 
The orange sort of circles is a bit of that you know, line of sight view shed um, analysis, should we get coverage? Similarly, last year we put um, oyster devices on our garbage trucks and generated an actual coverage map. Um, 50 plus 56,000 data points captured from the trucks. Now the reason for that was because we were saying, well, we've trialled the network. We know it kind of works. Yes, it's freeware because, uh, and, and, and as Paul was highlighting, it, it's free for you to use, but there's a lot of councils sponsoring it. There's a lot of work that Mesh do to enable that at the back end. So if you are using it for free, appreciate that there are costs involved. Other people are funding that work. Um, we use it as a trial network now. So it is not a network trial, it's now a trial network. The reason for that is that through TTN, you have somewhat limited functionality. Um, TTI or, or other commercial grade, private LoRaWAN networks, you'll enhance that functionality. But it's great and it's sufficient for us to test uh, to those use cases, can we connect? And that's why we wanted actual coverage maps so we can drill down into any local suburb, any local street that our garbage trucks have traveled down to say, did we get signal? Was that signal strength good or bad? Is it a good spot to trial those sensors? Um, so that's kind of the, the, the broad context. Um, and I do think uh, the other part of this, that, that the other element to this story to me is all around collaboration. So there's actually quite a lot of collaboration within council uh, on the different teams who are interested in this uh, low power wide area network capability, the different options. We are a very heterogeneous environment, which I'll come on to in a second. Um, but collaboration with external parties, talking to the meshed guys when we've come up with little challenges and saying, hey, do you know how to um, resolve this problem? The, the Sunshine Coast, Morton, the neighbouring councils, Gold Coast as well, have been quite um, uh, progressive with regards to LoRaWAN. But collaboration from our partners, so we don't have, uh, uh, we don't run a water utility, but the water utilities have some really good locations to install gateways because they're higher up. So we worked with urban utilities and we've installed a couple of our gateways that are actually on urban utility sites. It's a bit of a history obviously with Brisbane City Council and urban utilities. Um, but we also collaborated obviously with Suez who are our waste contractor. So there's a lot of collaboration going, going on as well. Um, we've talked and others have talked through a range of different use cases. I won't go into all of the details of these. Um, what I will sort of highlight is that you know, there are a vast number of use cases. Now I titled this slide the evolution of IoT because to me IoT has been around for years. Our traffic signal network is in effect an IoT network, a SCADA operational technology type of network. So what we did a couple of years ago is we did a bit of analysis. Where have we got sensors? I'm seeing is this a build? No, it's missing. Some of the words there aren't, aren't too clear for some reason. I'm not sure why they are online. Um, but ultimately what, we, uh, what I unpacked was the fact that we have and have had for quite some time maybe 45 different IoT systems that have been in operation for quite some time. That map is actually just a, a rough uh, plot of the devices that we know of. Uh, and when I say we, again, the IT departments, because a lot of this stuff doesn't happen within IT. This is happening anywhere and everywhere. Um, we mapped where are they? What are the sites uh, where we have sensors? I haven't plotted a whole bunch of other ones, CCTV networks on our buses and, and fleet management systems, a whole bunch of other devices. The complexity comes in, and I don't know quite why it's not showing, but the complexity comes in with regards to the operating model. A lot of these solutions are siloed, isolated, independent, unconnected, Integration quite often with these things because they haven't been considered and thought through are manually integrated. What that means is you'll go and download a file off a portal that the vendor has provided for this solution, download another file and you'll manipulate it in a spreadsheet. At that point you're kind of impl impl influencing, well what's the data quality? Um, Adam Beck made a comment earlier, I'm just going to grab the words because I, I thought I'd add to this. So he talked about collecting, communicating and crunching. I'd just like to add a couple of other elements, particularly in that communicate and crunch, is make sure the data is connected and has context. Um, because without that context, it's much harder to actually bring data together. As I was doing this work, I, I also uncovered a, a piece that I talk about a lot, um, the data science hierarchy of needs. I encourage you to look that up. 
Uh, it highlights, and, and it goes back to James's comment about maturity to a large degree. Um, at the bottom, we, we want to collect data. We're, we're actually pretty good at that. Next, you want to store data. Uh, ab above that, you then want to start to connect and integrate data. And that's where we start to fall apart um, because it's putting in that context. To get the ultimate outcome of data science, you actually need to be able to merge these data sets, the data sources, efficiently and, 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 and quickly. The operating model is about all the different players involved. So you could have, this is supposed to be model one where we build the solution ourselves internally. We buy a sensor, we buy a network, we buy that, but we build the solution. So the green is all, all council elements. I've intentionally got a space here. The others might be where you do a full vendor solution. You buy a service, data as a service. Um, so we've got a few of these scenarios. Smart bin sensors. We've got a trial at the moment where we've got a vendor providing smart bin sensors monitoring. They're being used by our malls management guys um, for uh, optimizing uh, runs. But in other cases, it's a hybrid. Um, we buy a sensor, we contract the telco network, and you've possibly seen the slow for SAM signs or other street signs that are capturing speeds of cars coming backwards and forwards. In Brisbane, the vendor provides the, the sensor. Um, we may own the sensor, but we provide the SIM card for them, SIM card, yes, um, to feed the data back. The vendor then supplies a portal. Um, the bottom there is about us trying to bring it all together, and I've left a, an air gap because that's not always the case. That's the, the, the direction we'd like to get to. Um, one other uh, comment, and I'm just conscious of time, I'll try to, to, to run through. The um, one thing that we've recently um, released in, in Brisbane City Council's new corporate plan uh, is, is one of the things around the way we work, and it's a new addition, which I think is, it, it aligns to um, James's comment, I think, around their smart city strategy. It's around valuing data as an asset and using technology as an enabler. But the priority is enabling what? The why, how do we make things better? And this is kind of where we've kind of played a lot of work uh, around the capability, around education, around saying to the business, what are we trying to achieve? Why are we doing this? What is that objective? What we've found in a lot of the analysis of existing solutions, they go to an objective, they leap straight down to the technology. And you've got the wrong people with the wrong expertise playing with the, the wrong areas. So the general concept is define your objectives. The IT guys won't often know that. We're probably better at, at, okay, let's now design a solution. But once you've got the objective, don't leap down to the solution. Say, well, if, if, if we've got this objective, what are the decisions we need to make to achieve that objective? I need to know X, Y, Z. Um, okay, well then to make those decisions, what's the data? What's the specification of the data? What locations do you need it from? How frequently do you need it? What level of quality is sufficient? Because that can impact the type of sensor, the value of sensor you buy. Um, only once you've done all of those sorts of things should you really look at the solution. There is a complexity with this for us at the moment which, which goes back to that operating model is do you want to build, do you want to buy? And uh, let's say that's one we haven't fully answered. Um, I'm not sure we ever will. Um, this is a, a really heterogeneous environment. Brisbane is a big council, uh, lots of different business areas, the capacity to bring everyone together and, and you know, Let's say be, be all on the same page is, is uh, ideal, but maybe have to be a bit pragmatic about that. Um, but yeah, the, the ultimate point is, as I said, format, frequency, latency, quality, security. Have we got catalog? Have we got clarity on ownership? Do we have access? And you don't necessarily want to put all of that rigor around everything either, because that can ruin your business case. And we've talked a bit about um, some of these things. The, the business case is one of the things that drives it. We built, a, 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 let's call it um, a, a trial platform. So we've, again, we've got the trial network. We can now very quickly support um, uh, the implementation of sensors and feed data through in that, in that build model, or we can spec things up and push that out to procurement in a buyer model fairly quickly and easily. Um, point being hot path, you need to make an operational decision, you need an alert, you need to do something with that data now. That's not always the case. We've got some water soil, soil moisture sensors. They don't actually need to make an operational decision in real time. So they don't really need that hot data. They're using it more in a cold data path where they can say, well, how effective was this infrastructure redesign in feeding water to the roots of a tree to ensure that that tree grew better? 
Street trees in Brisbane are a very important piece of, of, of our environment, of, of lifestyle. We need to know whether those trees are going to grow well because I can tell you the street tree growth environment isn't particularly ideal. Um, they, they struggle. Um, and this gives us the ability to, to redesign infrastructure and then monitor whether the soil is helping the tree, growth of the trees. Very quick, simple pilot we can spin up. It also helps the business in, in two fronts. One, think through, is that data useful? Do we want to scale this up? Um, is this working? Now, that might just be scaling up the infrastructure or it may be scaling up the sensors. We're not sure. Um, but it also gives, and this is, I think, James also mentioned a little bit around this, is that predictive stuff will, and, and goes back to that strategic analysis. If we've got the data, um, let's experiment with what are the impacts of different data on a different outcome, or will this help that? So I'll call it that data science experimentation type of work. Um, and just to finish off, I am late. Um, some of the key things that we've also been, and, and probably priorities for us at the moment around an enterprise capability, is, is focusing on, a, I mentioned that procurement piece. So when businesses go and buy things, we've worked very closely with our procurement guys to say, hey, just be aware that if they are buying a sensor, if you're buying a new lighting control system, that has technology. Consider this. Ensure that that data is integratable. May not integrate it because the integration costs, um, hence the air gap as well. You may not want to. It may not be viable, but, but be prepared for that and ensure that you can reuse it. Um, and then I, I call it the RACI, the, the roles and responsibilities. And this is a, a fundamental piece of the players involved with an operational technology and an information technology. There are people out in the field that need to uh, maintain the devices. They've got a whole bunch of work there. It's not just a sandpit with toys. We've got to be doing this. We've got to be sensible about ratepayers' money. So that's another area that we're really trying to mature, um, particularly if we're going to build solutions and operate solutions ourselves, where it's, if it's a vendor, it's much easier to cover that out of procurement. So um, that's all I'll cover off. I'll let everyone head off to morning tea now. Um, thank you. Thank you.